for men, for with men, it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. That's in Matthew 19. That's in Matthew 19. Go home and check it out. Which verse is that? I won't give that easy verse. Go. It's in 19. He says, Jesus said, for with men, things are impossible. But with God, all, not few things, all things are possible. But I like the same Jesus. Please, would you open your Bibles to Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. The same Jesus who said with men, it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Now look at what the same Jesus said. The same Jesus. Stay tuned for the latest message from Pastor Kevin Anthony. Turn your Bibles. Let's, turn, let's look at the Word of God tonight. And I'm, thank, I'm thankful to God that tonight is uh, breaking your bread. But we, we're going to take grace tonight uh, to, even as we listen to the Word of God, to align ourselves to that Word through the power of partaking of the communion table tonight. Turn your Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 14. 1 Samuel chapter 14. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. By the way, how many... How many, how many men were there with Jonathan, with Saul and Jonathan? How many people were there with Saul and Jonathan at this point in time? 600 people were there with Jonathan and Saul. How many were there on the other side? You should have been ready for that question because it was definitely coming. How, how many? Multitude. No, I want to know the number. I want to know the number. How many people were on the other side? I told you, it's in, it's in the Bible. It's there. It's recorded. There were some numbers put there. What was the thing? What was the thing that was there that was on the other side? Sorry, somebody said something. I could hear something. How many said? Sorry? Okay. 6,000 or 600? 6,000. So how many people were there? If, if you take one on one, one on one chariot and other one on one on one house, how many people were there for that? Please. 36,000. You just read it. You just found out. See, this is what I'm saying. Don't take the Bible and bring it nice and clean, dusted today on Friday. Clean. Nicely. And if you don't do that, no, no, no. Listen, this Bible is not for Friday to Friday. This Bible is for every day. By the way, what did Jesus teach us how to pray? What was the thing that he spoke of? What was the model that he taught? It was not the Lord's Prayer, it's our prayer. He told us how we should be praying. And in that part of that prayer, there he said something Give us today, once in a while, once in a while, our bread. When you feel like, when there is nicely hot and cake, hot cakes, bread that is baked once in a while, according to your thing, then you give it to us. No, no, he didn't say that. He says, give us today our daily bread. Listen, this is daily bread. This is not pudding. This is not cheesecake factory once in a while. Oh, come on, guys. Please talk to me. This is not cheesecake factory once in a while or once on birthday, once in a year that we go cheesecake after having pudding. No, the word of God has been reduced today at this point in time while we speak as pudding. This is not pudding. How many of us, honestly speaking, how many of us actually survive on pudding in our daily lives? In our daily lives? How many of us survive and have, oh, I survive on pastries? No. Listen, don't reduce your Christianity to just one time or pudding and what do you call, what do you call, what do you call pastries? No, this is daily bread. I'll show you the word of God. Now listen, 600 men on this side or rather 602 men. 3600 plus Saul and Jonathan 600 men on this side the Israelites and the other side leave aside the multitude the foot soldiers leave it because what you said foot soldiers somebody said what multitude right foot soldiers foot soldiers the raiders the spoilers the Bible says they were like the sand on the seashore leave aside those ones let's discount them let's stick to the number of people mentioned in numbers 36,000, that means 30,000 on chariots and 600 men on horse. Now, please, 
Jonathan and Saul had their sword. So leave those guys again. Discount it further. 600 men versus 36. What's the ratio like? 600 men versus 36,000. What's the ratio? Sorry? 60. 1 is to 60. Look at the odds. Who's, the odds was in whose favor? The odds was in whose favor? Was it in the favor of the Philistine or the odds were in the favor of the Israelites? Come on, children. Participate with that. No problem. Don't worry. If you make wrong answers, no worries. Participate. Mom and Dada, leave them aside. Leave Mom and Dada. Appa illa inni ke. Appa, right? Oh, yes. Now look at the odds. One is to 60. 60 men for one person to be taken care of. Look at the odds. What would you call this situation? Did they have a chance? Did these Israelites have a chance? Did Saul, Jonathan and the 600 men, did they have a chance against that odds? No chance at all. What do you call that situation? What would you call that situation? Impossible. You would call that situation impossible. There is no chance. This collect come to a dead end. There is no hope in this situation. And Jonathan and Saul are facing that kind of an impossible. The momentum was 100% in the favor of the Philistine army. Now go to chapter 14, verse 1. Chapter 14, verse 1. And we're going to stay in chapter 14, verse 1 throughout the, throughout the evening because everything is in verse 1. Chapter 14, verse 1. And then what happened? And now, he says what? And now, it came to pass upon a day that Jonathan, the son of Saul, said unto the young man that bore his armor, Come, let us... Go over to the Philistines' garrison that is on the other side. But he told not his father. And Saul tarried in the farthest, deepest, uttermost, deepest part of Gibeah, under a pomegranate tree, which is in Megron. And the people who were with him were about 600 men. And Ahia, the son of Ahitub, Ichabod's brother, the son of Fin Ahas, the son of Eli, the Lord's priest in Shiloh wearing an ephod and the people knew not that Jonathan was gone and between the passes which Jonathan sought to go over unto the Philistines garrison there was a sharp rock on one side and a sharp rock on the other side and the name of one play uh, one was Bozes and the name of the other Sene the craig or the the, 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 the the pointed rock the pointed edge was situated northward towards Michmash and the other southward towards towards Gibeah and Jonathan said to the young man who bore his armor, Come and let us go and over unto the garrison of these uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will work for us, for there is no restraint to the Lord to save by many or by few. Look at verse 7. That's the last verse for tonight. And he says, What? And, the, and his armor bearer said unto him, Do all that is in your heart. Turn thee. Behold, I am with you according to your heart. That's the word of the Lord tonight. Now go to verse number one. Are you all in agreement that the odds were against Saul and Jonathan? The odds were against the Israelites? There was no, there is no chance one against six, 60 against one. There is no chance. Even if it was six, still no chance. And we're talking about 60 men. 60 men ready for one person. And by the way, this person didn't have sword. This person doesn't have armor. There is no defense. Forget the offense, even of sword. Forget that. He doesn't have even defense system. And 60 men ready with their spears. 60 men probably with their, spo with their bow and arrow. Listen, when you're on the chariot, you're not taking the... Uh, you're taking what? The bow. Stand in one place, shoot. Ta, ta, ta. Finish. There is no chance. In that situation, Jonathan, who was with his father for a short period, where deep down in Gibeah, deep down, uttermost, furthest, deepest part, he waited for a short while. When he waited for a short while, he rose up. And he knew that the odds is against him, his odds is against his father, it is against the whole people around him. He stood up and he says, nothing doing, I'm not staying here anymore. I'm going to go to the other side. Are you with me, church? And what did he say? Come, let us go. Now, do you think he was walking into an impossible situation? 
come on guys was he in, getting into an impossible position so listen your momentum may be against you and the situation is impossible that's not the time to be waiting that's the time to get up and go come on guys look at this momentum there was no slightest of chance not a slight chance for him can i make it a little more difficult you said 1 is to 60 right yeah when jonathan woke up and he said i'm going what do you think the odds were now please think 600 for there the odd was 1 is to 60 now two people rise up and said we are going to take up a challenge what's the odds 1 is to 18000 When they started or before he could come with the idea the the odds were 1 is to 60 the ratio is 60 men for one person but now these two men rise up come on let us go and go to the land uh, in uh, of the philistine let's enter there and take what we have lost we all to take it back and what is the odds are 1 is to 18000 forget the multitude we are not even considering them what do you think there was a chance come on guys listen god is looking for people who are willing to take the risk even if the odds seem no chance even if the odds say that oh 1 is to 18000 listen why am i highlighting this that your mind may be renewed renewed in such a way it would be renewed in such a way that no matter what the situation god i know only you can do it no matter what the enemy is trying to intimidate you with the number trying to intimidate you with the size trying to intimidate you with the roar trying to intimidate you with the listen don't calculate how many are there on the other side god and you make majority that settles the whole thing jesus and i make majority come on guys are you with me listen you got to walk out of this room like even as a party of the community well god i want to walk out of this room with a mind renewed nothing is impossible with you now look at what jesus said jesus said for men for with men it is impossible but with god all things are possible that's in matthew 19 that's in matthew 19 go home and check it out which verse is that i won't give that easy verse go it's a 19 he says jesus said for with men things are impossible but with god all, not few things all things are possible but i like the same jesus please would you open your bibles to mark chapter 9 mark chapter 9 verse 23 the same jesus who said with men it is impossible but with god all things are possible now look at what the same jesus said the same jesus 23 mark 9 23 Uh, leave it. I love it. I love it. Love it. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Great. This is the good, 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 good thing that you did. This is the situation the father brings his son to the disciples to be healed because he is healed to be healed to be set free because he is infested with demons. They could not do so. They bring him to Jesus and the father is bringing his son before Jesus. Say your your disciples don't do anything. Please, can you do something? And he's before he's doing that. He's describing the state of his son. And one of the thing what he says what? And he says often times this boy, this son of his, cast himself into the fire, into the water to destroy himself. Then he says what? But look at me. If you can do. anything please have compassion and help us if you can please help us please 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 lord jesus said i will try no no he didn't say i will try let's see what happens no he said what jesus said if you can believe simple way if you only can believe and next what he says what for all things are possible to him that believes In the other place with God all things are possible for with men it is impossible but now he says it is also possible for the people things that are impossible to become possible only with what when you believe Listen the things that may seem to be a very big dream and you and I or anybody to that matter saying it's a very big dream I've got but I can achieve it on my own that means it's not an impossible dream because you could do it for a have to have a dream and there is no way that you are able to fulfill it on his own or her own then you say i need god that means that is that's an impossible situation hallelujah are you with me church this is good news for me 
because there he said with many it is impossible but with god all things are possible but now he says with many it is possible if only they believe look at somebody say just believe yes. hallelujah now look at this in a believer's life in a believer's life there is only one thing and that can never change there is only one thing that is impossible in a believer's life the one who has received christ there is only one thing there is only one thing that can he and he, he or she can never say it is possible no there is only one place in their life where they can say impossible what do you think it is impossible only one thing in a believer's life one thing is impossible one thing what do you think it is and by the way it's not negative it's positive impossible there's only one thing for a believer only one thing which is impossible only one thing in one area that it, it is impossible with one person you know believers like only one thing and you are trans maro you're thinking very hard abacha that is impossible no it's possible you want to see and your bible says it's once for man to live and once to die so that is what it's possible i'm talking about impossible kapil tam nahi kisu ha are idhar aa idhar idhar kya bola tumne are jaldi aao jaldi aao come 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 make sure he's on camera capture this guy as i told you i told you see what i told the first guy says sanjeeva you're thinking so much come 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 Give me a, give me a, give me a, give me a hug, man. Oh, hey, Baba. Let's look in the camera there. <laughs> Super. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Only one place in the Bible, Hebrews eleven six. Without, don't blow it. It is only in that place. It's only in that place that you would find a word that is attached to a believer. Impossible is when he says what it is. impossible to please god without faith so there is only one word that we can we are allowed to use in our life as impossible that to what in the area of belief <laughs> come on church are you with me listen i like that word impossible can we break it into three monosyllables huh i am possible break it up i put an apostrophe there m possible come on church look at somebody and say i am possible come on church listen that's what it says in this word if you can believe all things are possible to those who believe come on am i making some sense church Listen, if you are talking about odds are against you, then the Lord is saying, "Good, you are a great candidate. I can show you my power." Then, if the odds are saying no chance, then God says, "You are in the right place. I can do something in your life now because you cannot do it on your own. Try me." Listen, stop calling God and say, "Why me?" Turn that prayer into, "Try me." Come on, guys, stop saying that, Lord, why me? Why me? Why me? Why, why my family? Why my my? No, no. Put it across. Try me. Take him here. Listen. Take the same God here. Listen. Hold Jesus by His word. You said it, Lord. If you can, just believe. All things are possible. Listen. That's why He says, "What I can do all things through Christ Jesus, who strengthens me. I can do not few things, not most of the things. No, I can do all things through Christ Jesus, who strengthens me." Listen. God is looking for people. for those people who are looking for momentum even if the odds are against and the odds are mind blowing listen don't wrap your head around with 1 is to 18000 you can never wrap it around only god could do it listen if that your situation worse than jonathan he can still deliver but i don't think so anybody has a situation like where 1 is to 18000 come on guys anybody has got 18000 problems please you will do breaking a bread today Anybody's got eighteen thousand problems? No, probably you don't even have eighteen hundred problems. Forget eighteen hundred. You don't have even have one percent problem. One hundred and eighty. None of us sitting in this room would have one hundred and eighty thousand, eight hundred and eighty problems here. One hundred and eighty. From eighteen thousand, I reduced to one hundred and eighty. Your odds are not that bad. Look at somebody. Your odds are not that bad. 
Come on, look at somebody. Your odds are not that bad at all. Your odds are look at bless somebody. Say your odds are not that bad at all. Come on, are you with me, church? Are, are you are you able to comprehend what I'm saying tonight? Are you able to tracking with me? Then God, if you still feel I have got one odd that is against me and it is impossible, take God along with you in that place. Because if the first step is to invite and trust God in your impossible situation, He trusted God. He said, "Come, let us go. Let's pick up." Because we never know how God is going to work. It doesn't. God is not controlled by the number, either more people or less. He's not controlled by that. He stays outside it. There's no constraint. There is no restraint. Nothing of that stuff. Whether there are more people, few people, does not make God will save. Hallelujah. Second point. It's in the same verse, chapter fourteen, verse one. Please keep that number there. Keep that. Keep a bookmark. And we will stay. I told you, I will not leave verse one number one tonight. Everything is in verse number one. Verse number one. Are you with me? Verse number one. Verse number one. Are you with them? Hey, listen. Was Jonathan going when he said, "Let's get into the Philistine camp. Let's get victory. I'm not going to be sitting here. I'm not going to." Was he doing it for himself or was he doing it for somebody else? Please, for both. For both. Hallelujah. He didn't look at that six hundred men and he said, "You useless people. You don't have swords in your hands." Listen, God is looking for people. Who will do the impossible for someone else also? Come on, church. Are you? Your man was too weak. Is the AC effect that your man is so weak today, or there is no lunch tonight? Lunch, there was no lunch today. Listen, Jonathan took the armor bearer and said, "Let's go." It was not for his protection only, not for his life. It was for so many hundreds of them outside who had no sword in their hand. Listen, there are a lot of people who don't have. defense system there is no offense weapon in their hands they're defenseless people helpless people but they're looking for jonathan's to rise up and say i'm stepping into the impossible i'm stepping into that place called i am possible he don't want to do. listen this is what real leadership is listen there is a leader inside of you now leader does not mean you be at the pastor there then only at the leader no you could be a leader in your own house You could be a leader in your own clan. Now, leader in the own house means you don't have to be the dad on the top. No, you could be a single person who's saved, but you're the leader over there. Come on, guys. Your man was too cold for that. God is looking for you to rise up and say, "You say, my dad, not possible. My mother, not possible. They will listen to the word of God. Not possible. They listen. Just step in. Allow God to take uh, take God in that impossible situation. God can do anything. Look at somebody. God can do anything." Just try him. Come on, church. Just try God in that. He can do anything. Hallelujah. Now look at what he said here. Now it came to pass among the day that Jonathan said, "Son, da 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 da, come to that." He told his servant, "What did he say? Come and do what? I'm going." No, no, no. He says, "Come, let us listen." You're looking for momentum. Look for partnership. Look for partners who will be with you, and this partner was not somebody who just like that. No, 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 lose. No, no, no. This partner was as tight, as firm as Jonathan. Do you think Jonathan was courageous, by the way? Maybe, I think so. No, how many of you think so, or how many of you know so? No, know so, right? Now, in that know so, if you look at verse number seven, don't open it. Listen, verse number seven. What did he say? Let's go. Let's jump into that place. What did the young man say? What is in your heart? I'm going to be with you. That means he, he it was like a mirror. Your courage. This it was like reflection of himself in this boy. Now, look for such partners who will believe in the vision that God has given you. Look for people that if God has given you a promise, that God has given you a word, God has given you a dream, God has given you, and you know that you know that it's from God. Look for people who will feed into your faith, not feed into your fear. Hallelujah. Now, if you see in all these things. On this journey, he cut some partnerships. Which partnership did he cut? His father. The Bible says he did not tell his father he's going. By the way, he was his rel- he was his dad. He was his blood relationship. But on this journey, he knew if I tell my dad, he'll hold me back. He will not believe in this vision. 
He will not believe in this me taking this step. He will not allow me. He'll hold me. Listen, look for people if they are going to feed into your fear, cut ties. Don't tell your idea, please. Best is don't tell your ideas. Don't tell your visions. Don't tell what God has spoken about you and what God wants you to. God wants you to take a step. Don't tell them at all why. They will feed into your fear, they'll hold you back. Emotionally, they'll drain you. Come on guys, I'm making some sense here. He didn't tell, listen, Jonathan was not competing for popularity contest by the way. Come on guys. He didn't tell anybody. Because the Bible says, forget the father. Even 600 men did not know where he was. He did not say, hey, I'm going to fight for you. Hey, I'm praying for you. No, no, no. He just kept quiet. Listen, when God is giving you any idea, don't turn down. Like I said, like the father, he blew the trumpet in the wrong place at the wrong time. If God is giving you an idea, look for people who will believe in what God has laid in your heart. Look for people who are courageous, not cowards. Hallelujah. His father was small hearted. The other people were like, why, where was he? He was hiding deep down. Deep down in the holes, deep down in the caves, because that's how the the Israel, the, 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 the Philistines, when they saw Jonathan and this one, oh, the Hebrew kids, this Hebrew people, oh, the Israelites are coming out of their holes now. That tells me these all these six hundred men plus these two are all hiding in holes, underground completely, can't be seen. Listen, look for people who are courageous. Look for people, look for people who will be who will be courageous in your life. You know why? See, Jonathan took the armor bearer and said, let's go. Now when he came to the edge of it, right in front of the army, he told him, let's go to the let's cross over, let's go to the other side. This armor bearer said, what's in your heart? Just go ahead and I'm just going to back you up. Listen, this armor bearer had every reason to list out all the issues. He could have listed out all the excuses, why not to go? <laughs> Correct? Are you going off your head? One is to 18,000, one is to millions, there are hundreds. Bible says they were like, like sand on the seashore. Jonathan, I don't think so, it's a good idea. Jonathan, I don't think so, it's going to work. Please, let's go. No, 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 he didn't think for a minute. What's in your heart, go. Listen, that does not change the New Testament idea. The Bible says, in the Old Testament it says, two is better than one. So woe unto a man who goes all by himself and finds himself alone. Better to go two by two. Because why? If one falls, the other one can lift him up. Jesus said the same thing in the New Testament. If two or three shall, uh, uh, two of you shall agree on anything touching the earth, concerning the earth, touching the earth, it shall be done by my father. Jesus believed in the power of unity. He spoke it out. Come on guys, are you with me? There is power when two people agree. So you know that in this, whatever the God, what the Lord has laid in your heart and you feel that you need encouragement, you need somebody to stand by, you need somebody to help you out, you need somebody. Listen, listen, you could be the armor bearer for somebody else. Don't ask questions. Don't just say, I'm going to be the Jonathan, I'm going to be the Jonathan. I, no, 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 hold on a minute. God may be wanting you to be the armor bearer for somebody else. Holding the bag. Yes, sir, I'm holding a bag. You go ahead, I'm holding a bag. I'm there, I'm taking the weight on me. Hallelujah. Please. Tell me the name of the armor bearer. I want to know the name of the armor bearer. The day you find the name of the armor bearer, you'll be the pastor of this church, senior pastor. I will ordain you in the church. With all the pomp and show, with all the lights, with all the glitter, glamour, I will make you the pastor of the church. Please find the name of the armor bearer. No, the Bible does not care to give the name of the armor bearer. Listen, God uses the most insignificant to do the impossible. God uses the most insignificant. Woodleck has no name, nothing, no fame, nothing. He uses the most, most. He has done it before. Please, can you tell me the name of the child who brought lunch and that lunch was distributed by 5,000 men? Please tell me the name of that baby or the name of the same kid, any small kid. No, God uses the least. God uses the least. Makes it significant. Hallelujah. Listen, in that verse 7, he says, do as what is laid in your heart. I'll stand by you. See, when you're courageous, when you're courageous, you look for potential. You say, ah, 
there is potential here but when somebody is covered he look for problems you heard what i said he says when you are courageous and bold you look for potential possible i look at opportunities here i know it is there is but the moment you have a weak and a coward chicken heart when you want to like pull back first thing you look for problems listen if you're facing an impossible situation and there's a list of problems in front of you don't start reciting them listen that's a time to pray god give me a courageous heart because where there's a courageous heart you will see potential you'll see the right things but when you are of a when somebody is of a coward and a weak heart you look for problems you run away from that place that boy did not see for problems if he wanted he could have given a list but he did not see problems that young boy saw potential said it i see potential i see the potential victory coming i see the potential slaying i see the potential spoil i see the potential wealth i see the potential harvest there something is happening and let's go let's go listen the odds have not changed by the way the odds had not changed in verse number 7 the odds did not change in verse number 6 when he says it is there is no restraint for the lord to save by many or by the odds did not change the odds still remain the same what's in your heart i'm going to still do come on guys look for partnership look as i look for partnership partnership who will feed you into your faith not partnership look for partnership who will feed into your faith but look server 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 no that cut partnership who are feeding into your fear in the name of jesus are you in the church listen he didn't care to tell his dad no don't call your friends tomorrow you started feeding it to my fear i'm going to cut from you no hold him it be wise just keep quiet just move on come on guys he didn't go and tell you that you're hiding here you're a king what is useless you are i'm going no he didn't say he didn't have to listen you don't have to go and in, intimate uh, 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 intimate somebody listen you are being useless you, every time i'm with you every time you're speaking to me i feel negative i feel low i feel depressed and uh, stop calling no 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 need to say just keep quiet don't tell your plans don't share your ideas don't share what you're praying about don't share what you are pursuing because you know that person will pull you down look for someone who will lift you up are you with me church third point it's in the same scripture it's the same scripture he says what verse number 1 and it came to pass what happened it's in the same scripture let us go he says what come let us go over to the philistines garrison on the other side and he told not his father next verse says nobody in the camp knew he was gone now tell me what was jonathan's status what was his designation who was he in the land he was a prince correct as good as being the king as good as the number one guy on the top right on the top now please talk to me people who are on that high level ranking for a right head of the state or whatever you want to call it whoever you are on the right on the top whether a president whether a prime minister whether the ruler of the land whoever is right on the top right on the top does he or she enjoy something called security some places up in you know, the place that i come from it is called z security some guys z plus 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 that it's never ending z plus security that means 24/7 somebody is doing what is cordoning them or protecting them they go to the toilet somebody is standing outside you go to the kitchen somebody is standing outside you go to the bedroom somebody i mean they are like one they are like one shadow they are all over the place they, they listen if you have to go to the car no no you don't open the door i will open it for you come on guys all the time surrounded with security what is it for security comes from the word what secure correct jonathan left his comfort zone jonathan left his security behind he was a person who was used to having security all around him all the time because who he was he left those 600 people back there and said i'm moving out of this place listen If you're talking about momenting momentum to turn in your favor you need to come out of your comfort zone Sitting in the comfort zone 
and saying i'm waiting i'm waiting victory is not going to come that's why jonathan says i'm getting out of my comfort zone i'm getting out of the covering of that i have here i'm getting out of the security of the people he says enough is enough i can't be surrounding myself with bunch of people who are defenseless or people who are uh, who cannot fend for themselves i cannot be among the midst midst of people who are like cowards running deep down i need to step out i need to break out i need to get out of this place and he stepped out of his comfort zone and listen comfort zone what 24 type of seven people were around him he broke that security and he walked out of that place you talking about momentum you need to step out of your comfort zone you need to step out of the security that you are enjoying right now that's what it means to step out in faith and trust god into a realm because see he didn't know what the situation is there today we I, you and i know there were 36000 people on either on chariot or on horse he didn't know 36000 today you and i know that it is written in the bible they were like sign on the sea or he didn't know that all he knew is i'm just going all he knew that he was he said about I, 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 i'm going into that place listen do you think he was taking a risk come on church do you think he was taking a risk do you think he was taking a risk now see what the bible says what was same 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 verse because same same chapter verse one ah oh, this point you should listen to this if you are expecting to win the battle if you're expecting to come have your victory come your way in your comfort zone you could be sadly mistaken if you and i will be praying god i'm praying for 50 years fasting every single day every monday i'm fasting for next 30 years it is not going to happen in the comfort zone because why god wants us to come out of a comfort zone into the conflict zone and listen nobody likes conflict zone they like comfort zone god is looking for people if you're saying god i want the momentum in my favor god is looking for people who would embrace conflict and not just comfort hmm no hold a minute it's a thought provoking thing in the midst of your security in the midst of your comfort life in the midst of everything is like oh i'm well protected don't expect your victory to come by itself because god says can you get out of the place i will show myself strong in the conflict god is look listen every time next time you have a conflict in your life you're the right place because in the midst of the conflict in the midst of the conflict god is polishing your character i'll show you i'll show you it's there it's there it's there it's in the same scripture it is there God is not needling us to pull us and shred us down no in the no shred us down in the right way shred off all the all the character that is not from the lord he's shredding it but listen the shredding off of the character is not in the comfort zone it's in the conflict zone next time you face a challenge next time you face a conflict just say thank you lord you're doing some work in me hallelujah listen god can only show himself strong when you leave your comfort zone You can say God is impossible God with God all things are possible God can do this God listen you can you and I can be singing that song in the some comfort zone for the rest of our life and never tasted comfort I never tasted his power No can we step out into the conflict zone and see what God can do Come on guys look at somebody to get into the conflict zone <laughs> Am I playing the right key today No no yes yes By the way, we pushed a little more further. You said the odd was one is to eighteen thousand. By the way, in the time when they started off, six hundred men without swords. How many swords were left? Or how many swords were there? Two. Who had it? The father and the son. The king and the crown prince. Now in this situation, in verse one, how many swords were there? What are the odds now? What are the odds now? One is to eighteen thousand. No, one is to thirty-six thousand. You have one sword, thirty-six thousand are ready. With their spears, with their bow, with their sword, they're all ready. You show us one, we show you. Listen, that's the time you start singing the song with God. All things are possible. Because you know, at the end of the day, there is no way you're going to take any part of that glory. 
you know that you know that you know this was god now there are two christians here and i'll round up here in 2 3 minutes good verse number 2 verse number 2 and paul tarried in the uttermost part of gibe under a pomegranate tree which is in migron and the people were with him were about 600 men that's it don't read any further there are two types of christians how many swords were left by the way no how many swords were left the father and the son in this church there were in this church setting there were only two people who had the sword look at the one person he took the sword who had the sword he had the right sword he had a sword that was a working sword the sword what do you do he took it and he went down deep down into south part southernmost part and he gets into the place and he takes a takes a nap uh, takes takes into a comfort zone and rests leans against a pomegranate tree sitting down aram se he had all the time in the world he took the sword he's got the sword but he takes the sword and sits down leaning against a pomegranate tree but in the same church there's another guy whose name is Jonathan he takes the sword and says no way i'm going to be sitting there and sipping coffee and tea i'm getting out into that place and often enough we have the same issue in our church in our christian life now you may say pastor i don't have a sword listen how many of you think that you have your tools how many of you think that you have your tools how many of you think you will have your tools what tools do you have by the way you said yes what kind of tools did you have no oh, sorry no just tools just tool just tool just not even tools i just want to talk about tool what tool do you have huh the word of god we say you have a tool right you have a tool right so you said you have a sword what is a sword the bible says the the new testament the bible says put on the whole armor of god and then it what the last one it says have the sword of the spirit which is the word of god yeah. hallelujah by the way it is not the least it's the sword it's the weapon listen all other pieces in your armor of god is for defense but there is only one for offense rest everything defends you covers you protects you but there's only one that is there the sword of the spirit which you take on what and you knock off the enemy there's no one sitting in this church can say that listen by the way how many of you own bibles forget sorry sorry i take back my words how many of you own your bible a bible you have okay let me flip the question the other way how many of you don't have a bible for yourself i'll buy for, i will i will gift you I promise you I will gift you but I will make sure you pay for it. Listen, I'm not talking about the bibles on this. I'm talking about the bible called this. Pastor that is old school. Listen. There's a lot of gold in the old school. Amen. Somebody said old is gold. And I don't mind being labeled as old is gold. Come on church. Listen. what is the idea what is the idea of somebody saying i have got 25 bibles the question is what's the point what's the point of having 25 bibles the next thing is what are you trying to say so what oh i have the passion bible i have the message bible i have the greek bible i have the hebrew bible i have a bible which has got hebrew it's got uh, the, the the greek and this side is uh, my language that i understand and this side i have english translation so what I mean with the question is so what if the tool is sitting if the stool is in a place and you are sitting under pomegranate tree and leaning against it it's useless but god is looking for people if you say the momentum let it be in my favor the god is saying take a tool get listen i like to draw this last one let's arise and pray let's arise let's arise let's arise let's arise i'll strike this last point soul the main leader Saul the father who should be leading from the front the Saul, the bad father he is taking the sword and now he is sitting under the pomegranate tree in a tree in a luxurious and a comfortable zone whereas the son he is taking the sword and he's gone out into the conflict zone look at the stance look at the stance look at the position of this the father is sitting The father is sitting on the pomegranate tree. Correct? What does the Bible say in the New Testament? Put on the whole armor of God 
that you may be able to stand and withstand. I'll say it one more time. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand and withstand. Not sit down, leaning against the pomegranate tree. Listen, there was one guy who took the sword, was sitting down. But there was another guy who took the sword, he wanted to strike. Choose what you want to do. You want to sit or you want to strike. What brings the momentum? Having the sword in the hand and sitting or having the sword and you want to strike. What do you think is going to bring you momentum in your life? What is it that is going to bring you victory in your life? It's the one that you don't take the sword and sit down and you take the sword and you do what? Strike. You don't take the sword and sit down and say, oh God, when is going to happen? No, you take the sword and stand and the Bible says what? Withstand. And then that last time I read the Bible, it says what? Resist the devil and he will flee from you. I want you to pray. I said, God, even as a party of the communion table tonight. Give me grace and I may step into the impossible. I may live, I may have an appetite to live in the impossible. Pray and ask God for grace. God, pray, pray. Even as you partake of the community table, it's, it's not just, it's not, it's not a ritual that you partake of the community. This is the power of God. This is the power of God. This is the power of God. It's a privilege. It's a privilege. It's not a routine. It's a privilege to, to partake of the communion table. Pray, God, even as a partake of the communion table, I stand upon that mark 923, God. You ask, if you can believe, God, I want to be that person, Lord. That with, when you believe, all things are possible to those who believe. Pray and ask God for grace. God, even as I partake of the communion table, Lord, bring the right partners in my life. Partners who are courageous, not cowards. There was one man who had the sword and he was sitting in the comfort zone. And there was a man who was courageous who had the sword in his hand and he was there ready to strike. A courageous person, a courageous person will always fight in faith. But a coward will always will wait in fear. Listen, that's not your portion. A courageous man will always fight in faith while a coward one will always be in a position of waiting, sitting in fear. Listen, that's not your portion in Jesus' name. Say, God, even as a partake of the communion table, make me fearless. Pray. I may be a man, I may be a woman, Lord, that my faith, I'm willing to take risks in my life. Pray and ask God for grace. I'm willing to step out of my comfort zone. God is looking for people you can be waiting and waiting for your victory in the comfort zone where you may not even call, you may not even get it. Listen, he's the God of the conflict. That's why he said in the New Testament, you and I are more than conquerors. That word conquerors, that word conquerors, that scripture conquerors is not to be decorating our walls of our house or the door, house, door uh, our doors in the house or the, like a wall hanging. That thing is written that you may and I enter com com conflict zone. That word is not for the faint-hearted. That word is not for the weak-hearted. That word are the ones is the ones who enjoy the, and get into the conflict zone. That's why he says, "You and I are more than conquerors." Pray that you would wear that badge, not once in a while or once in a lifetime. No, pray God that would be the story of your life, wearing that badge more than a conqueror. Rather than wearing a badge more of a coward. No, it's a God. I pray for grace even as I partake of the communion table this night. Pray God, I'm willing to enter the conflict zone. I will embrace conflict. I will embrace challenge. But that's the way God begins. That's the place that God begins to shape in. That's the place that God begins to mold us into the right character. That who he wants us to be. The right character.
I'm willing to embrace God. I'm willing to embrace conflict. Every next time I see a challenge, I'm not going to run away from it. I'm not going to get under a pomegranate tree. Today's pomegranate tree is sitting in the fuse of the church, sitting in the easy chairs of our church. No, that's not what God is calling us to do. Sitting and enjoying the and having us a good time. No, God is asking us to get into a conflict zone. If you don't have a conflict, praise God for it. Now, conflict zone is not the challenge that you and I play in our prayer place in our personal life. God is looking for people who will actually get into the conflict zone where you see the people sitting in darkness and you snatch them from the jaws of death. You snatch them from the jaws of the enemy. God is looking for us. God is looking for us. That's why I said. God is looking for us as young people who are willing to get into the comfort zone, who are willing to get into those war zones, who are willing to get into those difficult areas and say, no, I am not going to sit in this place. There's a moment of waiting, but there is also a moment to step out.